Hi everyone, uh, recently I did a video about the IS-2's 122mm D25T gun, uh, specifically I compared its performance on paper and its performance in real life. Uh, now interestingly enough, even though it packs quite a punch in paper, in reality it uh, was even more powerful uh, and had an even larger effect against German armor than just uh, penetration calculations might suggest. But one of my readers pointed out something interesting, which is of course penetration at long range isn't worth anything if you can't hit your target. Uh, and so I decided to do another video and talk about just that now in my uh, most recent book, IS-2, uh, Design, Development, and Production of Stalin's Warhammer. I do cover this. Um, you can see a silhouette of a tiger, makes a nice target here. I do cover the topic in some length, but I decided to uh, cover it in this video as well. Now, just a small pedantic aside. Uh, this video is going to talk about the IS-2's ability to put shots on target one next to another. Uh, video games like World of Tanks and War Thunder call this property accuracy. However, the actual mathematical term is precision. Uh, it doesn't really change the contents of the video. It's just that if I don't point it out here, someone's going to point it out in the comments. All right. So speaking like of video games like World of Tanks, uh, the D25T is usually depicted as very powerful indeed, which is why it's balanced out by not being able to hit the broad side of a barn. And uh, frequent prayers to orange Jesus are a fundamental part of the gameplay. Oh man, not again. But was this actually the case in real life? Well, fortunately, we have gunnery tables for the IS-2 tank and its 122mm gun, so we can just go and check those. Uh, the table that I'm using is going to be for the armor-piercing shell. Uh, it doesn't really change the numbers. Uh, the values for the other shells are more or less the same. Uh, the, this table measures the probable error up to 4,000 meters, which is pretty excessive considering that most World War II tank combat took place at under, uh, I think it's under 800 meters actually, but let's say 1,000. So the table gives you a figure for what's called probable error. Now before we go too much further, I should probably tell you what probable error means. So in real life, the flight path of a shell is affected by things like uh, deviations of the gunpowder load, and imperfections in the shell itself, its weight is going to be slightly different than nominal. All of these factors you can't really control or measure uh, that well as a gunner, and so their effect on your gunnery is essentially random. Uh, this random distribution does affect where your shell lands, and that follows a what's called a normal distribution, or a bell curve. Uh, before we get into too much math, I'm going to demonstrate it using an uh, uh, old Soviet artillery textbook. So imagine you have a field and you fire 100 shots into it. Uh, your the, your best 50% of your shots are going to be in closer to the middle, and then the further out you go, the fewer shots you get there. So how do you measure probable error? Take the area where all your shells landed and split it into eight strips. Uh, the middle two strips are going to contain the best 50% of your shots. Now, the strips that are next to those are going to contain 32% of the shots, so 16% each. Uh, the strips next to that are going to contain 14% of the shells, and then 4% of your shells are going to be on the outermost eight strips. Uh, now, the width of one strip is what's called probable error. Now, this is a lot, um, so all I have to do is remember that the, your best 50% of your shots land within the probable error of your target. All right, so now that we're done away with the definitions, let's take a look at the actual numbers. Uh, let's look at uh, the line for 1,000 meters, since uh, most tank duels take place at a range of under 1,000 meters. What you see here is that the probable error uh, for vertical and horizontal dispersion is 30 centimeters. So 30 centimeters, you know, not that much. In terms of an actual tank, a panther is about 3 meters tall. Uh, I picked him a panther in the last video, so I might as well keep using him as an example. So... 50% of your shells, the deviation is not going to exceed horizontally and vertically. Uh, it's not going to exceed 10% of the size of a panther, which that's pretty good. You're going to hit your target, your best 50% are going to hit your target most of the time. Um, now, what does that mean for 100% of your shells? Well, remember that if you take your, if you eliminate your outliers, your shells are going to land within an area that's, um, or within a distance, that's eight times your standard deviation. So uh, 1.2 meters away from the center of a panther is still going to land you on the panther, just maybe not the part of the panther you are aiming at. 
So uh, at a range of 1,000 meters, you're not really going to miss a target the size of a Panther tank if you're shooting from an IS-2. Now let's go to 2,000 meters. Uh, so the probable error at this range is 60 centimeters. Now, 60 centimeters, twice the range, twice as much. Uh, 60 by 60, it's that that's still going to be a fairly small square. 50% uh, of your shells are still going to hit a Panther tank. Maybe not the exact part of the Panther tank that you want it to hit, but they're going to hit. Uh, but multiplying that 60 by 4 in each direction, that's that's a larger deviation. So at uh, 2,000 meters, you're not guaranteed to hit a target the size of a panther, but you still have a pretty good chance of hitting it. And remember, at 2,000 meters, the IS-2's gun can easily penetrate the upper front plate of the panther or any other part of the tank. So how does theory compare to practice? Uh, fortunately for us, the standard QA procedure for a D25 gun was to fire off 10 shots at 1,000 meters, then fire off 10 shots at 2,000 meters and see what the deviation is. Uh, now, they measured a slightly different thing. This was distance from the mean point of impact rather than standard deviation um, or, sorry, a probable error. Uh, but it can still give us a sort of estimate about how accurate these guns were, sorry, how precise these guns were on paper compared to in real life. Uh, now, at 1,000 meters, the distance from the mean point of impact was between 24 and 40 centimeters for the best 50%. And then for the entire range of the shots, that was 70 to 90 centimeters. Uh, at 2,000 meters, it is, of course, bigger uh, since the distance is greater and so the best uh, best 50 percent range is between 45 and 90 centimeters and then the entire 100 percent of the shots fall within 1.2 meters and 1.3 meters uh, so if you overlap that data with a silhouette of a panther you'll actually see that this is better this is better than the gunnery tables would suggest um, of course the gunnery tables need to cover the worst case and uh if you sample enough guns, it's going to present the average case. So, uh, a realistically, an IS-2 is not going to have any problems at hitting a Panther tank at this range. Now, you might say, hold on, this might be all well and good on a shooting range, but on the battlefield, your trajectory depends on the range that you set. Uh, and if you overestimate the range, you overshoot, underestimate, you undershoot, you know, you're not going to hit your target. Um, Fortunately, the gunnery tables have data for that, too. Um, the IS-2's gun, for some reason, in a lot of media is depicted as this low-velocity howitzer that's just lobbing cannonballs. Um, that's not entirely true, and by not entirely, I mean not at all. This was a very high-velocity gun, muzzle velocity almost 800 meters per second, um, and so it's direct fire range, that is the range at which the height of the ballistic trajectory does not surpass the height of your target for a target that's three meters tall like a panther, was 1180 meters. Uh, so essentially, if you're at that distance from more below that distance from a panther, and you can confidently overestimate your range, and you're still going to hit again somewhere on the tank. So, so to recap, the IS-2's gun is a high velocity gun with a flat trajectory. Uh, it's a very precise weapon. It can engage the target, a target the size of a panther at a very long range. Uh, and so, unlike how it's depicted in most video games, this is in fact a long-range precision weapon. Uh, if this discussion of the IS-2 piques your interest, I recommend you get my book, IS-2 Development, Design Production of Stalin's Warhammer, uh, recently very favored, favorably reviewed by Dr. Teppel, whose work you might also be familiar with if you're a World War II enthusiast. Thank you.